Hello everyone and welcome! Vasco here from the Angular University. Welcome to the Advanced Angular Library Laboratory course. In this course we are going to cover the advanced features of Angular, but we are going to do that in a very fun and practical way. What we will be doing is we are going to use those features on maybe their most typical use cases to build a series of small open source components for Angular. Essentially, we are going to be building a series of small components that can be potentially reused in just about any Angular project. This is going to be something very concrete that you could actually use in your own applications. The components will be built from the simplest component to the most complex, so we will be progressively increasing the difficulty of the components along the course, we are going to introduce testing from the very first component or directive that we build and we will be testing the components as the course progresses. Closer to the end of the course we are going to introduce animations in the final component that we will be building. So all the modules that we will be building will be compatible with Angular ahead of time compilation, they will be available on NPM and I hope that this will encourage you to publish your own module it's going to be a ton of fun. We will be using the Yarn package manager all the way. Uh, well, except to install Yarn itself, we're going to be using NPM, but that will ensure you a stable development environment where we are sure that the dependencies that you have downloaded are exactly the same ones that I had running on my computer. Now, let me tell you about the components that we are going to be building together in this course. We're going to start small with a simple component that will already present a lot of the advanced features of Angular. This component is going to be a font awesome input box. It's going to be mobile friendly and it's a great starting point to see how many advanced features we will be introducing there. You will probably be surprised to see that several features will be introduced. We will be talking about component design, how to style components, and we will be introducing testing straight away from the beginning. At this point, we will also see in general how to make components themable, meaning they have a default theme, but it's simple to override it so that the component will adapt to the look and feel of any application. As an exercise, we will also be building a Google Material Design input box, so meaning it will be able to display an icon which is coming from the Google Material Design library. So this will be our starting point, an initial component, an exercise. We have already tested a library, deployed it to NPM at this stage, so we are ready to continue to increase a little bit the level of difficulty of the library. We are going to now build a tab container that has a default theme but it's still fully customizable. So what do I mean by that is that we will be able to override just about anything in the tab container. For example, to override the look and feel of the buttons. The tab container will be able to accept new tabs added dynamically at runtime. So at this point, with already three components uh, built and deployed in NPM, we are going to be building an input mask directive. So this will be the first directive that we will be using in this course. This input mask directive will help the user to introduce anything that has a predefined format, such as for example a phone number or a social security number. This will be designed in a way that it's compatible with the components that we have been building so far. Next, what we're going to be building is a dynamic modal component. So like a pop-up that you sometimes see for logging in a user, etc. This is going to be a completely dynamic component and what I mean by that is that the model will not be hidden, let's say with display none on the page. It will be added to the page last second, so it's a completely dynamic component. We haven't done this before in this course and once we have that in place, so at this point we have already five or six modules created in NPM, we are going to build a new library that is also very usable and quite useful, which is we are going to combine all the directives and components that we have built so far into a dynamic model payment component that we will be adding animations to. So this is the part of the course that will be covering animations. 
So I hope that this gives you an overall idea of the content of the course. If you want to know the exact features that we will be covering, I can give you an unextensive list. So we are going to be covering the advanced core Angular features such as uh, templates, template outlets, ng content, ng container, style isolation and customization. We are going to be covering AOT or ahead of time compilation. We are going to be covering uh, global events, debugging with the Angular CLI, view children, content children and all the decorators that are related to all the notions uh, around the light DOM versus the shadow DOM. We're going to be covering all the directive features such as host binding and host listener, dynamic components that will be the modal. We're going to be covering keyboard events, testing, animations. So again, this is a non-extensive list. I invite you to have a look at the description of the course uh, in case if you are looking for a particular feature, but we will be covering a lot of them, a lot of the Angular advanced features. We are going to build a series of open source libraries. It's going to be a ton of fun. I hope that you will enjoy it. And because it's an advanced course, we are going to start straight away. We will be checking out the code with some predefined styles in place. And we will be diving straight away into building our first Angular library, deploying it on NPM. So without further ado, let's get started building our first Angular library. Thank you for watching.